Meanwhile, it was a tough time for everyone here in Twin Orchards. Pray for Kenneth's recovery to discuss the proposed budget. Good evening and thanks for joining us. I'm Tom Allen. Well, it was Veterans Day across the country and President Obama took part in a ceremony at Arlington National Cemetery to honor U.S. service members. Christina Mutchler reports. Now, during his two and a half year tour of duty as a Tuskegee Airman, Dr. Brown flew on 68 missions, shooting down two fighter jets in the air and destroying three that were on the ground. Well, it's been a community tradition for almost 20 years. The Binghamton University Fest kicked off today with music, food, clubs, and of course, new students. County Executive read a statement on behalf of the police officer's family, thanking everyone involved for all of their efforts. They also asked for privacy during this difficult time and urged everyone to pray for Kenneth's recovery. At Nassau University Medical Center, Tom Allen, TV 10 and 55 News. Well, both presidential candidates are gearing up for Wednesday's big night, the first presidential debate. President Obama and Mitt Romney are finishing up some final campaigning and last-minute debate preparations before facing off in Denver. Christina Mutchler reports. Skating is not just a fun way to enjoy the winter, it's also a great way to burn off some of those extra calories you may have put on during this busy holiday season. Entrepreneurs from all over the southern tier gathered at the Riverwalk Hotel in Binghamton today to put together a plan for a startup business. About 60 attendees worked in teams as they competed to create business models, pitch their ideas, and receive coaching from local entrepreneur leaders. Startup Weekend is a worldwide movement of entrepreneurs entrepreneurs who are learning the basics of founding startups and launching successful ventures. The Pope has a full schedule planned while he's here in New York. Tomorrow morning he'll say Mass at St. Patrick's Cathedral and then thousands of people are expected to line up along Fifth Avenue to get a glimpse of him as he rides in the Pope Mobile. Then Sunday he'll say Mass at Yankee Stadium before he departs the country. At Kennedy Airport, Tom Allen, TV 10 and 55 News. And we begin with a visit to the Vestal neighborhood of Twin Orchards. Tom Allen has the story. For over 55 years, Barb Stout has lived at her home here on Valley Road in the Twin Orchards community of Vestal. It's often a place where many of the neighbors get together at night to socialize. She's just a wonderful, friendly woman. It's just such a great neighborhood, you know. Um, most nights we're out here. And for Scott Wilcox, who lives across the street, Barb is like family. Mr. Stout is part of our, uh, she's part of us. She's, a, she's been around a long time. I've known her since I was probably in kindergarten. So it's only fitting that when the floodwaters hit their neighborhood last September and Barb's home was pretty much destroyed, they would be there for her. It wouldn't be for my neighbor or my family, I wouldn't be here. The damage was so extensive, she says she lost just about everything, and her home was scheduled to be demolished. So she went to live with her son in Plattsburgh. The 92-year-old has been through a lot in her life, surviving her husband and two of her three children. But she never thought she would lose her home to a flood. You have to be strong to survive and keep on trucking. Meanwhile, it was a tough time for everyone here in Twin Orchards. All of Barb's neighbors had incurred serious water damage to their own homes, and they had their own problems to deal with. I've stuck a lot of my own personal money. I used to have a savings account, and now I don't. I do what I, I, do, what I do when I can. Um, I really didn't get much from uh, FEMA, state, or anybody. Scott and Ron and several other neighbors weren't happy that Barb couldn't get back into her home, so they took it upon themselves to help her out. Well, we had a good friend who was a contractor, another one that was into the uh, foundation situation and gravel and dirt, uh, which is a good friend of mine, Bob Murphy, owns Murphy uh, Gravel Pits. He come in and in the neighborhood. We had friends that were carpenters, masonaries, uh, a, little, a lot of handyman people, so we all got together and here we are today. Barb says she received several thousand dollars from FEMA and invested most of her life savings back into her home, but she's eternally grateful for all that her neighbors and friends have done to get her back home just four months after she was forced out. I was the luckiest girl in the neighborhood here. And while neighbors Melissa and Steve Monk had their own trials to endure with their own home, they also had a reason to celebrate. Their son Gavin was born in July. For us, I've, I've always thought of it, especially finding out that he was on his way, that we ended up with a lot of good coming out of it, that it just kind of went uphill. It was, you know, tragedy while it was going on, but, uh, you know, everybody worked together in the area and 
you know, pulled through and helped each other and, you know, now we're back in and most everybody is doing pretty good right now. Flood actually made the neighborhood a lot stronger. It's an amazing thing and, uh, you know, brought a lot, brought the people closer together and, uh, you know, we were friends before, but we're even better friends now. In Vestal, Tom Allen, Fox 40 News. The Broome County Fair entertained thousands of visitors for almost an entire week. Today, Fox 40 Samantha McDonald paid a visit to the Whitney Point Fairgrounds to check out the excitement. Bronx resident Victor Ortiz came to Coney Island with his sister Nydia to take a walk down memory lane once he heard that Astroland Amusement Park was closing its doors for good on Sunday. I said I have to see it one more time. Located right on the beach, the park has been a part of the community for 46 years. You're losing a big part of New York. This is New York history here. The owner of Astroland, Carol Elbert, issued a statement saying the park was closing because she was unable to renegotiate a lease with the owner of the land, Thor Equities. Eddie Driscoll can't believe it. He's been coming here for 35 years. It's a sad day that, it, that it's going to close and that my daughters won't be able to continue to enjoy. Now one of the rides that will continue to operate is a historic roller coaster known as the Cyclone. It received landmark status 20 years ago and operates under a separate lease agreement. As long as they leave the Cyclone up, it still keeps a part of the heart of Coney Island. And for the Schneiers of Brooklyn, it's really heartbreaking for seven-year-old Jonah. He's waited a long time to go on the adult rides. Pretty sad. Yeah. This is a landmark. Uh, you can never replace a place like this. At Coney Island, Tom Allen, TV 10 and 55 News. And just days away from the first and only vice presidential debate, the candidates are preparing for the big matchup. Politicians from both parties are weighing in on who they say will come out on top. Christina Mutchler reports. Now from here, the Broome County Legislature's Finance Committee will meet with county department heads to discuss the proposed budget. Then on November 7th, it will issue a report with any changes that it feels are necessary. In downtown Binghamton, Tom Allen, Fox 40 News. Good evening and thanks for joining us. I'm Tom Allen. A Binghamton man has died in an early morning house fire on Thorpe Street. Officials say the blaze started around 6.30 this morning in the second story bedroom at 51 Thorpe Street in Binghamton. Authorities say nine people lived in the house and six were home at the time of the fire, but only five escaped. Authorities have not released the name of the 41-year-old man who was found in the attic. Officials say the blaze was so intense that it did minor damage to the home next door. They believe the cause of the fire was accidental. The holidays are just around the corner and the Salvation Army is in need of volunteers. The agency is looking for volunteer bell ringers for the Binghamton area. It's a tradition that's been taking place since the late 1800s. The money collected by the ringers will benefit local soup kitchens and go towards other services. Organizers say it's the perfect way to help those who are still suffering after last year's floods. Well, Halloween is still over three weeks away, but the Binghamton Zoo at Ross Park is getting a jump start on the fun this year. For the next three weekends, Boo at the Zoo will be taking place. This weekend's theme was Pirates and Mermaids. Kids that attend in costume can enter a contest to win prizes. The zoo has activities that are perfect for children between the ages of three and ten. Some showers possibly Friday afternoon, Friday evening, maybe some wet snowflakes mix again for Saturday. You know, we've really lucked out. We never see this in November. November is usually the worst weather when it comes to the fall season. And we're really lucking out. Looks like a great week ahead. Yeah, Absolutely. great. Well, that's all we have time for tonight. Thanks for watching. We'll see you tomorrow night. Have a good night. Good night. Well, flying over the skies of New Jersey, three of the newest additions to the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. With less than two weeks to the holiday, balloon handlers did a test flight of Hello Kitty, Papa Smurf, and Elf on the Shelf, all set to debut in this year's parade. The giant balloons and their crews were practicing in New Jersey today. During the recession, many high-end and middle-skilled jobs disappeared, but there is one area where the number of jobs has expanded over the last several years. Fox News correspondent Anna Coyman has more on industries that are still thriving despite the tough economic times. Good evening and thanks for joining us. I'm Tom Allen. Firefighters were called to 7 Dayton Street in Johnson City early this evening after a garage caught on fire. Officials say no one was hurt in the blaze, but it did cause extensive damage. Authorities say they had it under control within a short time and the cause is under investigation. 
Well, there's mounting anger over the pace of the recovery effort to Hurricane Sandy. It's been 12 days since the superstorm hit, but some hard hit places still look very much like disaster areas, prompting angry protests outside one power company by folks who say they feel completely abandoned by the government. Fox News correspondent Peter Ducey has more. Meanwhile, it was a tough time for everyone here in Twin Orchards. All of Barb's neighbors had incurred serious water damage to their own homes, and they had their own problems to deal with. Many residents in New York City and the surrounding areas are struggling to get gasoline after Hurricane Sandy. Today, the Department of Defense opened mobile fuel stations in the area. Fox News correspondent David Lee Miller is in Staten Island with the latest. So it looks like we've got some good weather for uh, apple picking and That's some That's what I'm hoping to do tomorrow. It should be fantastic. The apple pie got me hungry. Now I definitely want to make some of my own. Yeah, tomorrow will be another fantastic day. A little bit warmer tomorrow than what it was today, which, you know, who doesn't love that? Overnight temperature is still very chilly tonight. A little slightly below average for what we should be seeing this time Fall of the year. Fall is definitely in the air. Yeah. Well, that's all we have time for tonight. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you tomorrow night. Have a good night. for everyone here in Twin Orchards. Pray for Kenneth's recovery to discuss the proposed budget. Good evening and thanks for joining us. I'm Tom Allen. Well, it was Veterans Day across the country and President Obama took part in a ceremony at Arlington National Cemetery to honor U.S.